episode number 169. <laughs> uh, I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Grow up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, also joining us today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. And guest hosting for this week is Kyle. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, or better known as me, nice Skype, but that's a whole another mess that I'm not gonna go through, so I'm just gonna rely on Skype now. So, <laughs> how are you guys? How are you guys, James? Uh, pulling through the commission queue and realizing that I might not be able to make it to both conventions that I have booked this year, but no. hey, that's what happens when life throws you a curveball. You get a curveball? <laughs> I don't know, baseball. You don't know metaphor. <laughs> uh, it's also true. It's also true. You silly person. <laughs> uh, what about you, Ro? What about me? <laughs> I'm finishing my commission queue, and I pray to God that nothing bad happens within the next two months. Oh, what happened? Oh, let's not talk about it. Let's just say... That's not a word. Could go, uh, sweetie, but turn that off. <laughs> let's just say things are... Changing in real life. Ah, all right. Let's put it that way. All right. For then. the best or for the worst? Uh, I have no idea, to be honest. I have no idea. There's a lot of talk, there's a lot of questions, but there's no answers. Ah, that one, eh? All right, uh, all right. Wishing luck from here, hoping that it's for the best. Yep, yep. And Kyle, what about you, man? Eh, not too much. I've had the week off work, been working on a new short film script. All nice, fun, exciting stuff, really. Yeah, and I painted a wall. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, talking about painting, you and me play Splatoon, right? Oh yes, no, I've, we've been playing matches on that for the last couple of days, haven't we, Norman? Yeah, the thing is, we've been playing a lot of Japanese people. We have actually that. I have yeah. noticed that with the names, like it's been very international. Our games. I, I, I'm trying to think. Are we international? Because I know Japan. Well, Nintendo's from Japan, so it's obvious there, but. Um, do, are we fighting people from the US, UK, or all over? Because some names are in English, so, yeah. You're a kid, you're yeah. a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid. Is that the theme song? Really? Yeah. The commercial? Yeah. Wow. I, I was on a stream the other day and they call, they only, they had that on the loop. <laughs> you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid. You know what? I, wasn't that a Motown song from the 60s? <laughs> you're a kid, you're a squid. You're a kid, you're a squid. I'm pretty sure the game is awesome. I'm pretty sure the game is awesome and it's very involving and, in, and in interesting and cute and fun. Mm-hmm. But good grief is the fandom as in and about it. Oh. Why? How come? I, uh, I have three friends who play Splatoon. Mm-hmm. And one of them was so adamant about making me see how it is the absolute bestest <laughs> video game in the history of okay. gaming. That when I started to argue with him and say, well, you can also say that Super Metroid is a pretty excellent game. That's not a word! Super Metroid is a... That's not a word! Come back to Spatel! <laughs> I won't say that. Okay, okay, calm down, dude, it's all right. Oh, screw you, ban from my channel! Ah! Oh, wow, well, I... T- okay. I- can I just say sorry for saying that to you, James? <laughs> I, like, I was having a bad day, you know. I would never say bad things with Super Metroid. I'm, I'm so sorry, James. I just, say, please, forgive me. Dude, don't joke about that. People will be not believing you. <laughs> That's true, yeah. No, there will be someone going, he hates Super Metroid. They no, in your no. In, the, in, this current, in this current culture of uh, social media, Tumblr and all that, people will believe even the stupidest of jokes. Oh, wow. So don't, don't, don't joke about it. <laughs> they will end up believing you. Oh, wow. oh well, I mean, if, if that's the case, we, I should just go a bit more ambitious and say something like, oh, saw the Hedgehog. That was an awful game. Mega Drive, <laughs> hate it. Oh, Nintendo, boom. haven't made a good console in 20 years. Oh, I wonder how many things they can say that could just drive the ratings up or down. Now, Sonic Six, that is the best game of all time. <laughs> can we please oh. move on swiftly? <laughs> Shut up, bro, we're having fun. <laughs> Uh, we're burning stuff, aren't we? And Rose trying to put out the fire, but we're not letting him. <laughs> no, but honestly, Splatoon, I, I played it. I wouldn't say it's the best game ever. It's fun, but 
I, I don't know. I can't say what's the best game ever. I don't have that opinion. Like, I probably would say I don't have a favorite movie of all time. That's you just know, me. Not, the Wii U is one of the best selling consoles of this current yeah, generation. True, I don't true. know. I, I don't know which one will be the best. I think the best will be the, the Nintendo 3DS, actually. Oh, yeah. That, that's good. That's, uh, yeah, that's and smooth. I will say that it will be closely followed by the PlayStation 4. I don't see the Xbox One being the best selling console of this generation. Depend on location. But, yeah. well, yeah, of course it depends on location. Like, in Japan, I guess the PS4 is more popular than the, than the Xbox One. The Xbox One may be more popular in America. Mm-hmm. But hey, you never know. Um, yeah, well, I mean, Xbox so, One in, in uh, Japan, I mean, it's like, you look at the sales there and it's like, you just wonder, how, who's buying it? You know, like, so, you look at, like, the sales figures, like Wii U and oh, yeah. PS4, some and it's like, will, oh, 20,000 a week. <laughs> and some people one, will but, say that, some people will say that, uh, Battlefield 4 will be the best video game of all time. And other people will tell you that Persona 4 is the best video game of all time. Everybody has their own opinion. It's the uh, because case. Is the what? It's a matter of taste. Because it's like, matter- yeah. 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 To be perfectly honest, nothing will surpass the days of Pong. So, there's that. Yeah, Pong was simple back in the days. Like, the gaming in the old days, you just have... Well, you, you use your imagination a lot. Like... Just watch E. T. Like that thing was built within six months, if I remember right. We six are not weeks, talking about months. six weeks. We are not talking. Wow. We are not talking about ponies in this uh, podcast about ponies. But I don't care because I like the, the, this discussion. <laughs> yep, true. Uh, true it's it's a good intro, and I might want to continue it with <laughs> with. Um, I was watching the Angry Video Game Nerd video. Uh, yeah, video. yeah. And uh, I I was watching his specials on the Atari video games. And they made me realize how appealing the graphics were in those video games. And if you notice, as video games get keep evo- keep evolving, it t- it took them it took them took them a few years until they got appealing again. Mm-hmm. You remember the the the, the GameCube P- PS2 era where all of the video games they were trying to be as realistic as possible, but oh, then yeah. the characters will end up being spastic. <laughs> they will end up looking <laughs> ridiculous. Like uh... it's it. it up until the days of the Nintendo 64, where mm. the Nintendo 64, the graphics were all blocky, but I mean, yeah, they, 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 they were still fun, yeah, they were still fun to watch. But then when they were starting getting closer to the Uncanny Valley, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with those, those cutscenes that looked like they were made with mannequins, oh, yeah. and the characters talking to each other, standing stiff on the mid, in the middle of a room or something like that, mm. when, when video games were trying to be more cinematic, that's yeah. where they stop feeling like video games. And I will say that even Mass Effect, which is a video game series that I adore, suffers from this. Oh. The characters walking left and right just to add some movement to the scene <laughs> before they go back to be stiff mannequins talking and looking at each other. The face animation were fine, but everything else was so, yeah. <laughs> so limited. Yeah. I understand. Well, I, well, I tell you what, I mean, if we're talking about cinematic elements and video games, Speaking as the the video game guy here, like the one with all the video games, um, <laughs> true, true. did you did you guys have you guys ever played FMV video games? Oh, oh god, I did. I played Phantasmagoria too. <laughs> oh, oh. Phantasmagoria! Phantom, oh, I can't even say it. Uh, Phantasmagoria! Phantasmagoria number two. A puzzle of the have, flesh. <laughs> that was actually the better game. Actually, I think number one was like a sort of bad shiny rip off. <laughs> But, uh, number, oh, wow. number one was stupid. Number two was absolutely hilarious. It was a riot. Wow. Talking about FMV games, I remember back in the days when I was younger, I, I went to the arcade and there was this um, shooting game, like, uh, what do you call it? Western um, cabinet Oh, shooters. no, Norman. You, you're this what I think it is. I got no idea. It's, I think he is. It's, it's not like how we have Time Crisis or Virtual Cop. It's real people video and you have a gun you shoot at the screen but the problem is i got no idea what i'm supposed to shoot at like it's not registering hits so was there I... a part where you are aiming at a midget holding two bottles you're supposed to shoot the bottles and if you don't shoot the bottles they gun you down and they kill you i don't know this i was 10 at I, the remember time. I, I didn't remember ball. anything like i was shooting and then like what what? And, oh god, that, that oh. was my experience with those kind of games and I did not Now, like them for at you all. kids who don't understand, FMB stands for full motion video. And they were supposed to be interactive movies that you were meant to like, 
click this button on this part to create this prompt. They were qu- they were quick time events before quick yeah, time QTE. events were a thing. Mm. It's it's like you were trapped inside a QDE cutscene. Uh except for the parts where they were uh, there was actual gameplay and the actual gameplay usually was just rail shooters. Yeah, I think the best one out of that was um, Dragon's um what is it? Dragon's Dungeon? Dragon Dragon Slayer. Dragon, Dragon Slayer. Slayer, yeah. I think oh, yeah. Dragon, Dragon Slayer. Slayer. Dragon Slayer is the best full motion video, uh, full motion video, video game ever made. Yeah, because Don Bloom worked on it and it had a clear yeah. story. But if you really think about it from gameplay aspects, that was meh. It was it was a meh video game because it's you know press <laughs> X to not die. Yeah, it, but it's it was much. it was. Good because the animation was so well done Mm -hmm. and the colors were so bright and the concept was so was so novel. I mean, nobody had done nobody had done a a a quick time event video game before that game. True, true. or at least never made one and succeeded. Besides, that was on on an arcade. You you were able to play that game on the arcades. That was great. Yeah, true, true, true. But, and oh, imagine wow. that alongside like Asteroids or Pac-Man, you know, these sort of digital games, and then you've just got a Don Bluth cartoon blaring oh. at you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, it, it, can you imagine, like, do you want to play, uh, this uh, Space Invaders, or do you want to play Pong, or Dragon Slayer? Yeah! Get me to that! Yeah. Um, however, nothing will be as good as the Lost World Jurassic Park, uh, oh. arcade, ma- arcade machine. Oh, how was that one? Like, I never seen I that s- one. Was, was... I spent so many. It was a rail shooter. It was a. It was a rail a shooter. But yeah, you are in oh, a jeep. Oh wow! The, 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 the cabin, the cabin of the of the arcade was literally a jeep, and you had two guns. Oh yeah, and I remember, you could I remember play, that. Like a co-op or or solo. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I used to do was pay for both guns <laughs> and go John Woo on the video game and just grab both guns and start shooting. Who them. was driving then? Uh, no, nobody drives. Oh. It's an old rail shooter, so you oh. don't have to worry about it. But but it was hilarious because then some guy will show up and I will be like, here, take this, no time to talk. <laughs> he will join the game with that. Yeah, it was it was it was uh, that neat, that neat. Um, when I lived, it, they had the best arcade ever. Wow. It was like in the in the basement of um of a shopping mall. Oh. Wow. And they they had a metal slug, of course. They mm. had the, the Lost World Jurassic Park game. They had time co- no uh, Virtua Cop. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Virtua Cop, Virtua Fighter, they had all the Street Fighter machines, Crazy Taxi, and they also had, uh, pool tables. Ooh, wow. Okay. And, and, and those basketball machines. It was, it was awesome! Oh, yeah. It was so fun! Oh, God, I, see, I wish we, I wish we had that in Inverness, because we had, like, two small arcades. We had one on the high street, which had a couple of very outdated B-list kind of arcade. I can't even <laughs> remember the name of the games. Like, you know, there are mainly racing titles that kind of, Tried to go out the front door and missed. There's one arcade that's still left around here in Inverness, and it has it has a couple of arcades. It has like the sort of DDR machines. Oh. And it has and it has Mario Kart, the two player kart. Oh which yes, is brilliant. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Mario Kart, fantastic. Oh, it's just oh. great driving name. Just oh. Oh, oh, talking talking about DDR, talking about DDR. Last year when we well, personally for me when I went to Buck. They had a DDR with pony songs on it. That, that was so cool. And you know what? Brony Scott's around the corner. And do you think that they're going to have a DDR machine over there? It would be smart for them to have it. I mean, it's a great kind of social thing to do, you know. Even Because the thing is, it's one of those great games. Even if you dance like a prat and fail, <laughs> it's still fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. who looks daft dancing to Mickey by Tony Basil? <laughs> True that. I mean, also, well, if you're interested in going to um, Brony Scott, it's going to be on Friday, June 5th, starting from 11 a.m. Uh, and also tickets are going to be at £18 to £48. Wait, sorry, £48 for vendor tables. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, they're not sponsoring me for this, but I just got no idea. And this looks like fun, like going to a con playing games, because I remember Buck had a gaming room they had um mm-hmm. the gamecube and stuff so wish i had wish i had played those games because i got no idea buck had an awesome gaming room i remember that yeah they were they, they were they were well covered when it came to uh yeah, there was uh, when it came to entertainment Th- there was no moment of uh rest on that i'm pretty sure bernie scott is going to do exactly the same thing but you guys went to bernie scott right I did went to Brony Scott, yes, and I cannot wait to go again. I, I seriously cannot wait. I am going to sacrifice going to other conventions mm. 
to just focus on on Bronny Scott. What about you, Kyle? Uh, I'm intending on going. It's um, I'm just having to make sure the dates work around because I know the tickets are on sale, but I'm trying to remember when the date is that the event's on and does it with time of work and all the kind June of... June 5th on Friday. June 5th was yesterday. Tickets are on sale already. Oh, I'm talking about when. snaps. I'm not the good <laughs> PR guy. <laughs> you are the worst Would PR you like guy in all tickets? Then again, you're <laughs> an old serious. man, so you forget things. Oh, That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. We love you. That's why I was just checking the website going, hang on, June the 5th, we're on the 6th. No, hang, wait, no, hang on, wait. <laughs> yeah, okay, my, my, I derp. But anywho, um, Ellie Monty's got to be there, so if you're a big fan. <laughs> Again. <laughs> she was for so much fun. Don't know, that's the voice actor for Button's mom. Yep, but then she mom. was so much fun last year. She was across the, 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 the vendor hall, uh, from where I was. <laughs> and I think I think it was a sketchy, mm-hmm. or someone. They kept having conversations. One of them being Button and Ailey being Button Button's mom, <laughs> and it was a riot. It was absolutely hilarious. Hilarious. So yeah, Ellie Monty's gonna be there. Wow, I wish I could join you guys. I'm Jelly. Good. Same. Same. You're close, bro. I'm pretty sure you will be able to come next year. I'm pretty sure it will work I out. I hope so. I hope so. I wish Brony Scott was like a two-day event. Then it would be worth it for me to go. Kind of. It thing. is a two-day event. Really? They have the con- they have the concert one day and then the convention another day. Oh, now I need to double check. Well, because... technically, it's one day and the concert, ah. but it is two days. It is it is two days. Hmm. Okay. I know that there needs to be an um. There needs to be something that to make you ha- want to have the want to make the spend the expense of coming and all that. Yeah. yeah. True that. True that. I mean. It's not that I don't want to, but distance. Yeah. Come on, dude. You live in you, you live in Malaysia. I mean, it's not like me. To me, it's like a domestic flight. Yeah. True. I don't have to get out of the European Union. You you'll have to leave your country. Oh yeah, I need to jump to Dubai first, and then after Dubai, I need to jump off to Europe. So plus oh. the the jet lag, the the, the expense of trip that you have to take two airplanes. Yeah. It, sometimes it's you need to be practical about things and say this yeah. isn't worth it. Oh well. But. Yeah, well, was it Sugar Dove and myself have been uh, trying to organise getting James up to Scotland Shire to have a wee visit and have him round and do some brony-based stuff? So, frankly, we should probably try and organise and get the group together at some point and just <laughs> let me do a live you to show. The <laughs> let me invite you to the movies, of course. Well, of course, you can invite us to the movies. I'll I'm get the game t- systems ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am the movie. I am the movie guy. I like to invite my friends to the movies. <laughs> No yeah. matter what movie it is. Mm, true, true. Hell, I, I'm playing. Oh, no. You know what? Even, even, no, even if it was that movie, I wouldn't buy you to watch it just so we could riff on it. <laughs> that would be, that would uh, be fun. You know, talking uh, about... even, I, I, yeah, go ahead, Norman. Yeah. Talking about movies, right? I mean, did you guys heard about, uh, the gem movie that they're doing? The gem and the holo- and the holograms movie. Yeah, the real life fiction movie. That one. I I didn't I didn't watch the trailers, oh. but having a live action version of gem and the holograms. Yeah. From... How long until we have a version of Friendship is Magic Equestria Girls? I don't know, but with, from what I with with Taylor now. Swift as Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> Please no, no. <laughs> from no. what I heard, right? From what I no. heard, the gem and the hologram movie, the one that's coming out 2016, is not. Good, from what people said. that They say that it was disappointing. And you know what? Uh, I do hope that the one that's coming out on 2017, the Pony movie, done by Megan, is going to be good. Are you talking about Megan McCarthy, new head writer of uh, the girl brands on Hasbro? Mm, yes, I am. Nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't nice. It was blonde head trauma <laughs> induced, but who cares? True that. True that. <laughs> I I cannot think of anyone better to take care of the 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 girl brands for Hasbro rather than oh, yeah. than Megan. I think she's going to do a kick ass job. Yeah, this this is awesome now because we all know Megan does a good job for the episode she's written, and as of season four, she was the hit writer, right? Yeah, she was the story editor for seasons three and four, oh, and yeah. she has been story editing a couple of episodes of season five, mm-hmm. even though it seems that Mitch Larson has been taking care of most of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now she's uh, taking care of the, is she, he's doing that because she was taking care of the, the Rainbow Rocks uh, mm-hmm. writing, and she couldn't reach everywhere. 
She's also taking care of the, the script for the My Little Pony movie, right? Mm-hmm. The 2017 one that's been planned. And other than that, she's also done scripts for Pet Shop. And was it script or is it story? I, I don't remember. But here's the thing now. Um, with Megan on board for Hasbro's Head of Storytelling, well, this is a new age for most of Hasbro's show because think about it. Most of Hasbro's IP right now, their ponies, Pet Shop, Gem and the Hologram, that's what I remember, right? And Transformers. So we, if she's taking over everything, that's good. But if she's only taking care of the girl brands, that's, well, I won't say it's bad because if you guys <laughs> didn't know, the Gem comic that's out is really good from what I heard. What does Gem have to do with Megan McCarthy? I thought we were talking about Megan McCarthy. I don't know. I mean, story, maybe if there's a cartoon with Gem the Hologram reboot again. I thought Gem, I thought Gem wasn't Hasbro's property. Uh, I, it is. Is it? Yeah, it is. Is it? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Yeah. I thought that, really? Yeah. Gem yep. belongs to Hasbro. Yeah, because, yep. um, Surprise. when, back in the days, uh, Hasbro wanted to fight with Mattel for girl products. They had Gem and the Hologram kind of thing. It wasn't well, a big didn't... success back in the days, but hey. Well, but didn't Hasbro like destroyed Mattel in the, uh, 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 with the first sales of the Equestria Girls dolls for like Christmas 2013? Well, this was back in the 60s. They, 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 they outsold, yeah, but I'm talking about right now. They oh, outsold yeah. Mattel, uh, by quite a lot. Oh, I mean, of course, of course, they, they, they outsold them because Equestria Girls has the My Little Pony brand. Mm-hmm. I mean, anything that has the My Little Pony brand, can sell out anything. True. Despite despite Monster High having a higher quality oh, yeah. uh, if, product than than Hasbro does. Yeah. If you go to blogs like uh, Pixel Kitty's blog or even uh, Egophiliac's blog, they do enjoy the Monster High dolls. And I've I'm not, seen. I'm not into that kind of doll, and I enjoy the way that they are designed. Yeah. They are monsters. I know. That's so cool. And I. That is so <laughs> neat. Yeah, and I'm a big Gundam guy, and when I see the build for those dolls, they're not bad. Once again, Norman combining two topics that have nothing I to do know. with each other, but, but that's okay, but because talking about... Norman is a weird person, and his brain works like that of an old man. Yeah, but talking about toys, right, talking about toys, we all want pony plush, but we can't afford them. That, that's the problem with us. We want so much, but we can't afford them. But if you want a Big Mac plush or a Shining Armor plush... Funrise have you covered because they are pushing out those plush out now. And if you like the spaghetti bean plush, well, they're out there now. You know, I am looking at those plushies and all I'm thinking <laughs> is the bootlegs still look better. I know. <laughs> I know, honestly, because um, I seen the Funrise in person because my Toys R Us has them. They have the three princes, no, I think the four princesses right now and a few of the main six. And honestly speaking, I still like my 4DE one better. I have four 4ED plushies. 4DE? Really? Ar- yeah, four. Four of them. Uh, Cadence, Shane in Armor, uh, Applejack, and Princess Luna. I... And the reason why I have those is because they are super cheap. No, I don't think so. You have the 4DE. I think you have the uh, top winner version. What? The top winner, uh, top winner, top something. It's a China brand thingy. Oh, is it, is it the ones that have the cutie mark on both sides? Yeah, yeah, because, um. Those are the ones that I have. Yes, yeah. you're right. I, I was wrong. 4DE hasn't come out with those yet, but 4DE is a really good one. I have the Twilight plush, and oh my god, it's so fun. Like, it's just. 4DE uh, is alright, but again, the, the ones that, the ones that I have, the, the Chinese ones, mm-hmm. 10 euros per plushie. I'm, that's good, man. I, I'm not, that's good if. That's if, super cheap. Mm-hmm. And, and they look, and they look show accurate. They look like Almost. the characters. I, I no, no, I, I, to be honest, I'm holding Shane and Armor in my hand right now. And he looks exactly like the Shane and Armor in the show. He has mm-hmm. the, the Twily <laughs> look on his. He has the same hair. He has the both cutie marks on each side. He has the, the, the blue hoofs and all that. And I'm like, yes, this is Shane and Armor. Well, the, other plush is like my my concern is that the official stuff is being outdone by by a bootleg. Not really, because when it comes down to it, it's licensing, and Hasbro has well Hasbro sold license to other brands like Funrise is one of them, 4D is one of them, and there's a few other companies that bought license to make plush. And yeah, but this is this is this is bootleg. Okay, the, the thing is that the money that. 
The money that goes to the bootleg doesn't go to Hasbro. That's yeah. my concern. Yeah, I mean, the China one is the China one. Um, that's, well, if Hasbro can stop China, they're great. But <laughs> who can stop China, right? Nobody can stop yeah. the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's true. That's true. But as for me, I, I don't mind. Like, if I was hankering for a Big Mac or a Shining Armor and... If I can get them at Toys R Us and some, by, by some miracle, I have a super awesome discount where I can just pay for two bucks for a fun rice plush, I'll probably do it. Probably get cadence. But yeah, that's an option. That's an option there. But I don't know. So I am overwhelmed in the conversation. I just realized you guys are not saying anything on this topic. Yeah. Kyle, what are you I doing? got no toys. I had no experience with any of those old school <laughs> video games. I am completely out of my league then this episode. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Weird I that you are not experienced with video games when you are Markiplier. <laughs> Shut up, Wade. <laughs> but Kyle, what about you, man? Uh, I'm afraid I'm kind of with him on this one in the sense that, uh, apart from the fact that I do know video games, but I'm useless with toys. It's the like I go like I've gone round with um, Diana a few times. Like we went to Smives at the last meetup we had, mm-hmm. and uh, went around all the various toys and whatnot. And it's all the My Little Pony toys, and they bought a few things. Yeah. But I was more interested in the Wii U games <laughs> plug. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm fr- yeah, it's, it's like I appreciate the kind of design of the toys. I think I think the Fun Rides ones look really nice, just from an aesthetic viewpoint. They look quite nice and cuddly and cute, and that's kind of what you want. And to me, that's sort of you know, like I'm looking at the Big Mac one and uh, Shane Narva right now, and I'm just thinking, I would quite like the Big Mac one. I would quite like to have that. Right, it'd be quite good fun. <laughs> Uh, That's just kind of what's going through my head right now. Just uh... hey, I mean, Big Mac. It, it's show ac- no, it's not show accurate, but it's model accurate to the what you call this the blind bags. If you notice, uh, you ought to tell me. I'm going to show my ignorance. Ah, it's cool. But James, you notice that the Funrise Plush is almost similar to the blind bags version of Big Mac. Word of advice, if any designer is listening to this right now, making something accurate to the blind bag doesn't make it better. <laughs> uh, that's so true. That's also true. I have no idea what's a blind bag. Oh. Uh, All, you know ba- All I can it's... imagine is a bag without a sight, wearing dark shades. <laughs> it, a it's, a, it, it's a bag that, in, that uh, has a toy inside, and you don't know what toy it is. Yeah, like that's a kind of surprise. It's kind a of. Ca- yeah. Yeah, we have the chocolate. There is. Okay. Take Makes a look sense. Please. Blind bag. <laughs> oh, the names people come up with these days, hey, I swear. The, the blind, phew, blind bag's been around before ponies, actually. Rom, you are not that old. I like me. <laughs> exactly. Norman is Don't the forget which part of the world I am. We have different terminologies here. Like you, Norman is so old, you can combine all of our ages except his, and we will not be able to be as old as he is. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, be quiet, you little whippersnappers. <laughs> oh, what are you yeah. on about? Hmm. You're okay, a good sport, cool. Norman. The fact that you're taking all of these insulting strides says, <laughs> says, it speaks volumes of you. Probably. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. You're an incredibly nice human being. You're such a lovely little boy. <laughs> okay, that's just creepy. Uh, yeah, that, just this creepy. doesn't have a bad time. That's about just normal. creepy. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No, it's not. Not at all. Uh, but anywho, like, <laughs> getting on track, slash, go buy. Sorry, what is them. that track that you're talking about, and where can we find it? We uh, haven't been on any tracks since we started recording. I yeah, know. I mean, we, we started with, we, we started the rail, now we're trying to look for the, for the train track, and we are trying to find the, the entrance to one of the secret realms or whatever. It's like, we, we are not on track in here, guys. Yeah, I, Sounds I like guess. a Monty we Python dec- movie. We, dec- <laughs> we, decided to go, we decided to go on a side quest. We are not doing the main quest on this podcast. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the thing with anything. Oh. But I think we already covered all three side quests. You could, I mean, co- you could call this one <laughs> that. Yeah, but I, I think we already uh, covered all three main quests on the show because those are the yeah, news time no for more, this week. Because There is no more topic to talk about except the, the constant... Uh, Purring of trailers and previews of episode oh, one. I've I've been avoiding like plague because when I saw the first few, I duh no I I was. I'm not. I'm I'm letting myself get in soaked in this. No, I, I don't want to because I don't overhype myself. But anywho, anywho, uh, probably we'll talk about video games later. So, guys at 
home if you're listening to this. If you do enjoy the video game talk, do let us know. Because if you do, we probably... Are you planning on making a podcast on video games? I don't know. Probably we have a bonus section. Ooh. Probably we have a bonus section. Bonus, video game. bonus level. Yeah. Bonus level? <laughs> bonus show? I don't know. Um, But yeah, we'll have it there privately. I, I don't know. If you like it, just let us know. We'll try and see what we can do. But if you're still into the pony show, you can contact us at nbshow at gmail.com. And you could also reach us on the Twitters. The Twitters is at the NBS Show. So but we'll tweet about buying Emmy Larson's book. It's good. Go buy. And as for me, I am at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy right now is Splatoon. I love it so much. And Amiibos. Oh, God. I spend so much cash on Amiibos. <laughs> You become an addict. Come join us. The Wii U is brilliant. I know. What about you, James? Where can I reach you, man? Then you guys can find me on on my Twitter and my Tumblr. My Twitter is James Cork with a lower underscore in between each word. And my Tumblr. Well, you can go to askmovieslate.tumblr.com. It connects to all my other websites. So there you go. All righty then. Ro? You can find me on Twitter on a platoon slash amiibo free zone. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> at Relicious R underscore Art or my Deviant Art Gallery all shows Platoon and Amiibo Free Zone <laughs> at Relicious.DeviantArt.com Boo. You realize that by saying it's a Platoon Amiibo Free Zone you know that by saying that you're basically negating like over half of your fan base. <laughs> it's too mainstream! <laughs> okay, never mind. Mainstream is on the way. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Kyle? Where can people reach you? Well, you can reach me. I've got a Tumblr, uh, the one Midnight Scribe, uh, which you can find me on uh, Tumblr, which I just said mm-hmm. that. Bear with me mm-hmm. on this. I like Tumblr itself, I will repeat a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you can also find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall. I'm bringing that back online. That's where I'll be posting updates and things that I'm writing I might put in a little couple of updates to do with the Hell and Bronies. And you can also catch us at the Hell and Bronies page, which is, uh, I think, facebook.com forward slash Hell and Bronies, I believe. Uh, cool, 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 cool. So anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can catch us on PonyFitLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So I have been Roman Sanzo. I, I have been Jim. Oh, you stepping on <laughs> my <James> turf. James. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> You are such a... You, stupid! You are so stupid! I'm not stupid. I'm from the third world country. <laughs> that is stupid, you uh-huh. potato. Calm oh, down, you young whippersnappers. Let's get the show back on track. Lula. Oh, killed you. I have been very angry, frustrated, and stepped over. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm a going home. <laughs> and I'm malicious. And I'm Kyle. And we'll catch you on next week's episode. And probably I'm going to get inked. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Bring it on, Norman. Bring it on. I'll catch you guys next week. Bye-bye, y'all. Bro, take us out. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. You know that it took me forever to realize that Splatoon was a mix of Splat, Platoon, and Splat, and, uh, and Toon? You know? Just it's, now? It, it, it's three words in one! It's a verbal nightmare! Three, two, one.